From a tender age, we are taught that our worthiness and happiness are contingent upon the opinions and acceptance of others. This external focus perpetuates a cycle of seeking approval, blurring our understanding of genuine happiness that resides within. The pursuit of approval becomes a constant presence in our lives, permeating our thoughts, actions, and even our self-perception. We yearn for praise, recognition, and admiration, believing that they hold the key to our happiness. Yet, as we ardently chase this elusive external validation, we inadvertently surrender our autonomy and inner sovereignty. Comparison emerges as a potent force. It becomes a double-edged sword, cutting through our self-esteem and distorting our perception of happiness. It fuels a sense of inadequacy as we constantly find ourselves falling short in comparison to the seemingly perfect lives projected by others. We cultivate a skewed perspective, fixating on what we lack rather than embracing the abundance that already exists within and around us. The perils of comparison extend beyond individual well-being. It permeates society at large, fostering a culture of competition and division. Instead of celebrating one another's successes and joys, we are driven to outshine and surpass others, perpetuating a never-ending cycle of discontentment. Material wealth is not the answer, External possessions may provide temporary gratification, but they fail to address the deeper yearnings of the soul. When we are trapped in the cycle of acquiring material possessions, the pursuit of more becomes a never-ending race, fueled by the belief that fulfillment lies just beyond the next purchase. But in truth, this mindset only perpetuates a sense of emptiness and dissatisfaction. It is in this relentless pursuit that we become slaves to our desires. We erode our sense of contentment and inner peace. The Prophet Muhammad said, Real happiness is in contentment. But what is contentment? You may picture an emerald meadow with a trickling brook that fills you with a sense of calm. Well, maybe you would be content in such a place if you could actually spend your life there. But in real life, Contentment has more to do with attitude than place. Money can't buy it, and poverty doesn't give it. Contentment comes from being satisfied and thankful for who you are and where you find yourself in life. Believing that inner peace is more valuable than all the world's riches is a great start. How often do we find ourselves so involved in the day-to-day -day activities of working and raising our families that we forget to pause and give thanks for the lives we have and the people we love. When I was a child, I never fully understood the keeping up with the Joneses mentality. My parents always taught us to be grateful for what we had. Gratefulness touched every aspect of our lives. My parents worked hard and prospered, but they lived a prudent lifestyle. They were openly thankful for everything they had nurturing in their children the attributes of appreciation and generosity. We were always allowed to buy what we needed. Going out to dinner was for celebrations and never taken for granted. Family vacations were spent at the ocean or camping. There was the occasional trip to Disneyland, too. No matter what we did or where our vacations took us, we were encouraged to follow our parents' example and always be appreciative. If you are listening, that means you want to find your happiness and, to achieve it, start with validating your past experiences. Validation, in its essence, is a gentle acknowledgement and acceptance of the truths and emotions that reside within us. It is an act of honoring our past, recognizing the significance of our journey, and embracing the wisdom gained along the way. When we validate our past experiences, we offer ourselves the gift of wholeness, a gift that enables us to step into the fullness of our being. By validating our past experiences, we invite healing and transformation into our lives. The act of acknowledging our emotions, be they pain, joy, grief, or love, allows them to be witnessed and embraced with compassion. As we grant ourselves this permission, the energy that was once entangled within the fabric of our past begins to disperse, setting us free to experience the present moment fully.
No one wants to go back and work through the pain of the past, but you will discover that doing it will allow you to truly let go of the pain and thrive in the present. Practice the subtle art of detachment. Learn to let go. Detachment is a profound spiritual practice that liberates us from the shackles of external dependencies. It is the art of letting go and finding contentment within ourselves, irrespective of the ever-changing external circumstances. Detachment does not mean indifference or apathy. Rather, it is a conscious choice to free ourselves from the need for external validation and the insatiable desire for more. By detaching from external dependencies, we reclaim our power and take charge of our own happiness. We realize that our well-being is not dictated by external factors, but is rooted in our inner state of being. This shift in perspective allows us to cultivate a deep sense of peace, contentment, and resilience that remains unshaken amidst the ebb and flow of life. Detachment also involves releasing attachments to outcomes and relinquishing the need for control. We learn to surrender to the flow of life, trusting in the greater intelligence of the universe. This surrender allows us to embrace the inherent uncertainty of existence with grace and equanimity, knowing that true happiness is not contingent on specific outcomes, but arises from our own inner alignment. Embrace the power of gratitude. It teaches us to appreciate the present moment, recognizing the abundance and blessings that already exist in our lives. If we learn to recognize the abundance and blessings that already exist in our lives, we begin to shift our perception and attract more positivity. We have to look for happiness, because what we're looking for, we will find. I know, it's difficult. Often, we find ourselves trapped in a cycle of negativity, haunted by past painful experiences. These unresolved emotions can cloud our ability to experience joy and look for that happiness. Make the harder choice. Journal things you find happiness in, and over time it will become more subconscious than conscious. It can also help to talk about it with a good friend, as you are probably both challenging each other in looking for happiness. Lastly, we need to find harmony. To truly embrace harmony, we must confront the shadows within. Those tendrils of selfishness that seek to disrupt the delicate equilibrium of our lives. Selfishness, born from the illusion of separation, perpetuates disharmony and obstructs the path to genuine happiness. Through self-reflection, we learn to let go of our attachment to personal desires and expectations opening our hearts to the needs and aspirations of others. By selflessly offering our support, compassion, and understanding, we create a ripple effect of harmony that reverberates through our relationships and the world at large.